What's going on, folks? It's Nimble Thor here, and thank you so much for tuning back into my mobile gaming quest where I document playing a brand new mobile game every single day. And you know what, guys? Today it's time to check out Assassin's Creed Rebellion, which is currently in beta on Android and it should be fully released on iOS as far as I'm able to tell. So the odds are that many of you guys have not had a chance to play this yet. And that's actually why I wanted to go over it today, because this is really a high quality game and I've been looking so much forward to playing it. And so I finally got into it here in the, at least uh, these last two couple of days, so I wanted to share it with you here today. In terms of the overall gameplay, as you guys can probably already see by now, it's pretty similar, or at least somewhat similar, to games like Fallout Shelter or Hustle Castle, which I covered here on the, on the channel already. But then of course it's just way more polished because this is, after all, Assassin's Creed. So we have these three different characters with us, right, into this match here. And we have to just complete the two objectives, which are tamper with evidence seems to be the first one. So we have to choose which direction we want to go in. Do we want to go this way or this way? I say we go, we go left first. Okay, so we can tap between the different characters in the top left corner so we can see some percentage chances of taking out the opponents in this room. So I think for this one we want to probably just go with Tarik here. And we can use a normal attack, we can use these two different skills. I'm gonna go for this one because it's a really strong attack if we, uh, yeah, surprise attack. You guys can see that we nearly killed him in just one single blow there. So that was really great and we did not lose a whole lot of HP. These guys seems to not be all too strong, so that's nice. Oh, we did, we did actually in, in one hit, uh, we hit that one, one hit on uh, the, the other character. So in this room, there are two characters as well. They should be able to take it out pretty easily with Tarik again, so I think, yes, why not? Just let's go for that. Let's just do that right now. These are just one of the one of the many mission types, by the way, that we've got here in this game. Some of them will give us some of them will give us uh, shots, you know, hero shots, pieces of new heroes. Some of them will give us elements that we can use to craft items later on. Um, so this is just a standard mission, though. So this is just to get some XP and um, and and you know complete a uh, bigger chunk of this section of the world map that we can uh, that we can complete missions in right now. And then we unlock new sections by completing the story missions. I'll go over that very, very soon. So this one seems to be average instead of easy, so we have to be careful now because we are losing quite a bit of HP on our Tariq character here. Uh, he is down to around, I would say, like 45%, probably around 45%. So I want to show you guys some of the other characters soon, but it just seems like they don't really have a hu huge advantage here. This time, this time it seems that we can play with our main assassin here. I like this one so much. Look at this, guys. So we can use this skill here, stealth assassination, right? And we lure the enemy over here and we killed him instantly. That is so cool. We can do the same here, actually. We have an 83% chance of succeeding with this one. And we did it as well. Surprise attack. That is so cool. For this one, what do we gonna wanna go with, though? Do we wanna go with probably this guy because he seems to have a 100% chance of obtaining the, uh, what was it, obtaining the, the evidence or tampering with the evidence. So let's go do that right now. You guys can see that we've actually speeded up the progress, all the animations, you can see that in the bottom left corner. And we can also turn on the auto mode. Again, that is so strange, why does this game have an auto mode? I am really not sure, honestly, <laughs> because with these awesome animations here, I don't see why you would not want to go through these. They look so cool. I guess over time you'll probably get bored of them. Which is not a good sign though, because it tells me that the game does become kind of grindy later on. So this is tricky guys, we only have a 55% chance of actually opening this chest, even with our best characters. Let's hope for the best! Yes, we got it! Awesome! Uh, what did we get? Uh, partial loot? Acquired? Huh. Okay, so it seems we have to go over here as well, and these guys are pretty difficult, but with our assassin here, we should have a 95% chance of taking out that guy in a guaranteed one hit. What do we want to do here, though? I think we want to try to lure him out, because we don't have a lot of HP on our stealth, uh, our stealth guy here. No, it failed! It failed! Okay, so guys, we, we now just have to take him out, so we can throw some knives, which deals some nice, uh, nice damage, and we get to choose it, uh, sorry, we get to do a normal attack as well. So the way it works is that you guys can see the small bar, the yellow bar be uh, beneath our HP. Whenever that fills up, we can do a, an attack. And it's different from character to character how long that takes to fill up. And you guys can see that w against this guy here, we actually get to do two attacks before he attacks us one time. So what do we want to do now though? Because we died, I think we want to go in here with Hamid who has 100% HP left. And I think we might be able to take out this boss here with just one blow if we're lucky. Well, okay, not one blow then, let's see. Two blows, nice, 70 damage, that is so cool. Wait, that was not the, not the last one? Oh, wait a sec, guys, we do have to go through this section as well, and here it would have been kind of beneficial to have the um, to have the stealth guy, because he's really good at this parkour stuff. And you guys can see that we only have a 6% chance of succeeding with this. 
So that's not the best odds. I mean, I guess, no, we failed. <laughs> I was about to say, I guess, I guess we still have the chance. Where do we have to go now though? Wait, don't we, what? Wait a sec. What is it we have to do? What is the other objective? Tamper with evidence. One out of two. So, wait, did we go in the wrong direction? Oh wait, we can go over here now. Okay, I see it, nice. Let's do a strong attack here on this guy. Hope for the best. No, we lost the initiative. Okay, luckily we took him out though. Luckily we took him out. We took him out, guys. There are quite a few enemies that we have to get through uh, down here. Maybe it's easier to go up here then. Something tells me that it might uh, might actually just be. As you guys can see by now, these, uh, these levels here do take some time to go through. Uh, some of them are much shorter than this, obviously, and, and some of them are actually, actually pretty long, honestly. Um, I want to go back to the base building part of the game as well, obviously, when, once we get back to that. But for now, we're just going to see if we can actually finish this one. I think we can, but honestly, it's not looking too good right now because this is a guy with the most HP and he's losing a lot right now. And that enemy dodged. It dodged our attack. Uh, so let's do the... Yeah, we did a strong attack there. 130. So if we're lucky, we might be able to take out this guy in only very few blows. But no! No, he took us out! Guys, we're definitely gonna die now. That is so... I'm, I'm really sad. That is so sad. That is... No, and we lost the initiative. No! We actually lost this mission. Huh. Okay, I guess we have to go back and level up our characters. And this actually gives me a chance to show you guys how the base, or what the headquarter, it's not called the base, it's called the head headquarter, what the headquarters can do for us. So let's go back to the HQ over here. We have a small loading screen. I don't get why these, why it always has to load like this. Sometimes it takes quite a bit, which is a bit frustrating, even here on a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Um, but this time we loaded pretty quickly though. So we can go in here, in this room down here, we can actually train our heroes. And this guy actually leveled up, leveled up to level five. Uh, from three to five, so we got some extra lethality, some extra health, quite a bit extra health actually, I must say, and some extra attack. And we gotta just do that with a couple of our other characters as well, and this is where the waiting time comes in. Uh, because that's something I haven't really talked about yet. These two other guys are busy, so I guess we have to take them out from whatever duty they are on. One is on a duty up here. Let's take him away from that. So we're gonna remove this guy. Because you can assign you can assign heroes to these rooms, and then that room gets more effective. So, for example, this room up here generates gold. Wait, this one up here generates gold uh, just at any time, like just automatically. But if we assign a hero to it, it goes faster. So right now, I'm going to remove the hero from up there because I want to assign them to uh, to these XP XP training sessions down here. So we can only do one at a time though, uh, so let's use some of these codex here to level him up to level 5. I think that's gonna make a, make a big difference, honestly, for, for these fights, these missions that we have to go out on. So now the thing is that we can't really, well, we can still use this guy, and that actually, that's actually the good thing, because we can't do that in, uh, in many of these other types of games. You typically can't use, in, in Hostel Castle, for example, whenever you had a guy do something in a room, you couldn't use him on a mission, which was super frustrating and just a, a horrible monetization mechanic. But you can do that here though, so I'm pretty happy about that. But we do have to wait 20 minutes though for him to actually level up. So this is around the time where I would probably just close down the game, come back to it later on. But I want to show you guys a bit more of the game, obviously. So if we go over here to the missions map once again, uh, while this is loading, Let's see, there we go, okay, so you guys can see that we are in this region here, we're in region 1, and there are quite a few regions already in the game, obviously, we can expand up and, uh, and down here, so both north and, and south, uh, later on, if, they, if the developers so choose, but there are plenty of missions, even just here in region 1, uh, you guys can see the yellow one is the story mission, then we've got loot missions, which give the, uh, gives the, the, the stuff that we need to craft new items, and then we have a standard mission, legacy missions, legacy missions give us these hero shards that we need to, uh, to unlock the new heroes, and there are quite a lot of heroes, I gotta say, I think there are over 40 heroes. If I, if I remember correctly, there are over 40, at least there's quite, like, there's, there, there are many heroes in here. And that's a good thing, because that means that while we're now at a point where some of these guys have lost their HP, and we actually have to wait for that to regenerate, later on we're gonna have a lot more heroes. You guys can see that there are 44 heroes, so I was correct, 40 plus heroes. So 40 left to, to unlock, because we have 4 already. So... With that many, I would say that this energy system, which isn't really an energy system, but it still kinda is, because we lose HP and then we have to wait for that uh, to recover, that is gonna be a big restraint in the beginning, but later on when we have more heroes, I don't see that as a huge restraint or a huge limit on our playtime with the game, which is great to see, by the way. 
I don't get why they want to limit us this much in the beginning, though. Seems a bit strange. Maybe they want to pace it a bit slower and want to make sure that we that we learn to use every room here in the castle or in the headquarters. But I'm fine with that, though. If we go in here, you guys can see some of the other buildings that we'll be able to unlock later on are, like, living quarter extension, ceremony room. And I'm not sure what all of these are going to do, but I'm really looking forward to unlocking unlocking all of that, all of it. But up here, though, we have a crafting room, and I think we're actually done crafting this item that we should have probably uh, attached to our main stealth guy before. Maybe that would have made a big difference. I honestly think that it, uh, it might just have. We can uh, craft another one of those items. We don't want to do that, though. We just want to zoom out here and go into Heroes. And now I want to show you guys how we can attach or equip this new this new weapon here, because it's way better than with what we've currently got on us. This is kind of interesting as well, though. This is what, that, where we can see the stats of all the heroes. I do like all the details that the game goes in here into here, and we also can see the skills. I am I would imagine that later on we can level up those skills as well. But we also got equipment over here, and this is where we can now equip this item, which is way stronger. So now we are actually going to have a uh, quite a bit more critical chance and lethality, and also weapon damage just overall, which should be uh, which we should be able to see over here on the stats. Uh, stats in the stats section. We've also got some uh, progression stuff here. I'm not sure how exactly that works, but I'm sure once we find enough DNA, we can actually level this up to a two-star hero. And some of this, you know, some of this reminds me a bit of a gacha game. You know, gacha games with their, you know, with their many heroes and they're leveling up and then sort of increasing the star rating of those heroes once they've reached the, reached the max level. You can you can upgrade their their star rating. So I'm just hoping that we won't have the same sort of grind or pay to win ness of, of gacha games in here, but they do certainly have some some gacha some gacha elements in here at least. That's okay though. Uh, some guys really really like that. Some of you might really love that. But if we go in here to the shop, I want to show you guys how the game monetizes uh, in a bit more detail. So we can buy these cubes here, which has a chance of giving us a hero, well a guaranteed hero, and then we can uh, also get free rewards every four hours. And we also have daily selections here, which obviously change as the name kind of implies every single day, and we can buy some of these uh, things for the premium currency, and some of it can be bought for just the gold in game, such as this fabric here. And we can only buy it once per day. You guys can see that I've already bought the Codex Scrolls, which are the ones we use to level up our heroes. Uh, and then we can buy Helix Credits over here, which is a premium currency. We can buy that for real life money going all the way up to 100 US dollars. Uh, which I'm not really surprised about, honestly. I mean, many games, it's pretty standard for these types of games, honestly, to go up to, uh, all the way up to, uh, to 100 US dollars. Overall, though, let's just try to go into one more mission here while I kind of wrap up on the game, because overall, I really like the art style. It's just an insanely polished game. Let's go into this loot mission here. Insanely polished game. Art style looks fantastic. It looks like all of our heroes actually have full HP. Uh, again, I'm not sure how, why exactly that is. I think I have an idea that maybe if we actually die in a mission, we get full HP automatically. I think that's actually how how it's uh, how it's done, which is kind of nice because that means that we we don't have to wait that often. Like if we actually lose, which might actually be a strategy, then like if you're low on HP, you might as well just die so you get full HP automatically. But uh, but yeah, I, anyway, I was rambling, I, I'm rambling now. I like the art style, the animations look fantastic. I don't get why they made an auto system. Let me just show you guys the auto system. We can just toggle it on here and all of this happens automatically. I'm not doing anything right now. I don't know why they did that because the animations look so cool and I, I like the strategic element of having to choose, do I want to sneak up on this guy and attack him? Do I want to do just a straight frontal attack with one of the more you know uh, HP heavy characters who can really take a blow? Uh, and go into a melee fight, and we want to sneak up on these guys. I like that element. I don't know why they made the auto system. It's a bit strange. I find it a bit disheartening, honestly, because it also tells me that the developers might plan to make the game super grindy at higher levels, which is a bit unfortunate now that they've, you know, put so much time into these awesome animations and attack skills. But we finished this one pretty quickly, though, and I guess that... Oh, we didn't finish it completely. Sorry, sorry about that. We, we got one of the objectives, I guess, or one of the chests open. Um, but uh, but what do you guys, uh, what, what's your opinion on this game? What do you think about it? Do you like it? Have you played it already? I don't know which countries exactly it's out on on Android, but I've left the download links as I always do down in the description box down below. And I would definitely recommend you guys to go uh, go check out this game. This is one of the better and more interesting games I've played, and it's definitely the best of this type of game. Like if you're considering playing Hustle Castle or Fallout Shelter, unless you're a huge Fallout fan, I really recommend you guys to go check out this game because it actually, I mean, the, it looks great, it plays nice, Nicely. So far, the monetization isn't as heavy as it could be, uh, even though, of course, the game, the game does try to, to monetize and does try to make us spend money uh, somehow. So that's sort of going to be my conclusion on it. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys think. And with that said, I just want to thank you so much for sticking around till the end of this map. 
map, sorry, a red map of this video to the end of this video. I hope you like the game. I hope you're gonna go download it if you're interested in it. And I hope you'll leave a like on this video if you liked it. I hope you'll subscribe if you're new to the channel because we cover a new game every single day from Monday till Friday. And I'd love to have you guys come along on that journey that I'm on of, of covering a new mobile game and playing a new mobile game every single day. So until next time, guys, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.